Greetings and hallucinations, and welcome to another fun episode of Photoshop Party. Today we're going to be talking about brushes. It is Tuesday the 13th of April, and I, for some reason, I was flaking today. My granddaughter put an offer in on the house. I said they had to have it in, had to be able to close by the 28th of April. I said, oh, they got plenty of time. Then I looked at my watch and said, they got two weeks. <laughs> like, wow. That's Easy. a fast close fast close um we are going to talk about brushes today and have a good time questions answers um if you have questions keep them simple brushes are not my forte um sandra pierce is the brush expert and you need to take her class um and she'll teach you all about brushes especially uh painting oil painting style painting stuff like that she's really good at that i've taken a class three times now that's outstanding so let me go ahead and get to my screen real quick i'll drop into photoshop and doing a program we did a convention up here in idaho this weekend and one of the presenters had this on his towards the end of his program and i just love what it said celebrate what's right knock off the bad attitudes and just start being happy. So there you go. Celebrate what's right. Let's do that. Don't save. Okay. Um, let's start with just your basic run of the mill brushes. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a round brush, which is your basic brush. I'm going to right click and I'm using my mouse right now. I can right click on my Wacom tablet as well but I have the hardness set to 100%, which means it's a super hard brush. So let's make it a little bit bigger by hitting the right bracket key, we'll make it bigger. Or on a Mac, you can hold control option, not command option, but control option, and drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it up and down to make it softer. So I'm gonna drag it all the way down. So opacity is 100% on a PC is control alt right click and drag control alt right click and drag so that you can make it harder softer and larger and smaller so we're going to make i'm just going to use black for the color and this is a hard edge brush bring my flow up to a hundred percent with my wacom tablet that's the the dot that it makes with my mouse, that's the dot that it makes. So if I push really hard with my Wacom tablet, I don't get a full size brush like I do with my mouse. So we'll make a full size brush, that's with the mouse. If I make it a soft edge brush, I don't know if you noticed, but the hardness went to 0%. So that means it's very soft. It's not hard at all. So with the, with the mouse, that's my soft edge brush. With my Wacom tablet, that's my soft edge brush. Um, one of the things you can do, let me change the colors. You can hit the edge to make your painting with a soft edge brush. Sometimes if you make it really, really big, that's not gonna do it. There we go. You can just see the edges start to take shape there. In fact, that's not even black. So let's go D for default to make our colors black. I'm gonna fill it with white again. Um, to get the colors that you want, there's a couple of different ways to do it, and I'll show you that in a second, but to get black and white, you hit D for default. Otherwise, you have to go find on the left-hand side, right under my banana, you have to find these arrows right here, or this little black and white right there to make it default. How long does it take to go over and find that little dot over there and click on it to make it default colors? 
save time, hit D for default, and you get black and white. So let's go ahead and make my brush smaller again. And if you want to exchange colors, you hit X. X will change between black and white or whatever your foreground and background colors are. All you have to do is hit X. Or if you want, you can go over and find this little bitty left arrow, down arrow object right there to change from foreground to background. So fastest way, hit X, D for default, X to exchange, exchange colors. If you want to change your opacity, I think most of you know this already, but right now it's, I'm set at 100% opacity. Let's say I want a 50%. All I have to do is hit five on the keyboard and it goes to 50%. So up in the top toolbar, it says 50% right now. If I hit one, it goes to 10%. If I hit zero, it goes to 100%. If you want an exact brush such as 63%, percent you just hit 63 rapidly and it will go in there for you you don't have to go up here to the slider to change it or you can also click on the word opacity and drag your cursor right and left to change it as well but you don't have to if your um, cursor is up in the opacity like mine is right now blinking and it says 40% and I hit 63 it's going to work so let's go to a hard edge brush so I'll go hardness 100 we'll go 63% let's see what 100 looks like across that you can see there is a bit of a difference right here in the middle So let's go 10% opacity, make a really large brush, B for brush, get out of zoom. That's 100%, I didn't want that, I wanted 10%. So I hit one. And you'll notice it's making the little bubbles on the outside of this. I'll show you how to change that in just a little bit. So that's 10%, add 10% over that. Add 10% over that, over that, over that. You can see it starts to build up. If you want to make it smoother transition, let's go ahead and fill this back up with white again. Change the opacity to 100. Change the flow to 10%. The trick to changing the flow is holding the shift key down. and it should change for you. So I just hit, hold the shift key down, hit one for 10%. I'm gonna use my Wacom tablet for this one. Let me change the brush a little bit real quick. B for brush. Go to my brush settings and go to smoothing. I don't know why it won't let me change the smoothing on this brush. Maybe because I have a bad brush. Let's go to general brushes. Go to hard round. Try it again. No, it's not doing it. Why are you messing with me today? I should be able to hit smoothing and bring up the smoothness control, but it won't let me do that right now for some reason. I don't know why. With flow at 10%, it should not be building up as fast as it's building up like that. And I can't tell you why it's doing that. 
Michael, your smoothing there is set for 10%. Would that have anything to do with it? Shouldn't. The smoothing should be for if I'm doing curves and stuff. Um, that smooths out the the curve as I do it. Let me bring it up to take it down to zero. Fill this back up and then we'll. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Hmm. Try to make an example. It worked earlier in the day and now it's not going to do. Fine. Let's go soft round pressure opacity, see if that makes a difference. Okay, you can see as I hold it down and paint over it, keep going back and forth, it will build up after time. Whereas if I have flow at 100 and opacity at 10%, if I do back and forth like that the whole time, it's not going to build up. If I lift up and do it again, lift up and do it again, then it starts to build up. But you start to see the transition lines across there. So that's what flow and opacity work with. Um, <coughs> hmm. I don't know why on a soft round brush, I should be able to change the smoothing. I think it's locked. It's, I just locked it a second ago, I unlocked it, and it's still not allowing me to click on it, which is weird. You should be able to click on it and go to that area. <coughs> oh, well, I didn't want to change it anyway. Fine, be that way. OK, um, so to change the flow, you just hold the Shift key and hit 5 for 50%. Or hit five to get opacity down. If you have your airbrush turned on, which is right next to flow, if I hit, say, zero for 100%, the flow will change. So it's backwards if, you're, if your airbrush is turned on. Then instead of going 50% when you hit five, the flow will do change, then you have to hold the shift key down to change opacity for the shortcut. If you get confused by that, don't worry about it. Just go up to the top to a bar and change it manually. No big deal. Okay, turn off my airbrush. Opacity, bring it back to 100. Um, Dun, 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 dun. If you want a shortcut for changing in the mode of the brush, which is fun to change because there's different things you can do with the brush. We did one last week. We used the overlay brush for changing um, layer mass. And you can also paint with color, which is really cool. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, so you can do that as well. There's other brushes that are available. If you click on your brush tool on the left hand side, you have the brush tool, the pencil tool and the color replacement tool. I've never, ever, ever used the color replacement tool. And I don't know if anybody here has. I know there's some people that are very experienced in Photoshop online but I've never used um, color replacement tool. I've used the pencil tool. Um, what I've done with that is changed the color to blue. So we'll just pick up a nice blue color, change to the pencil tool. I will make sure that my size is way down, probably around four, and I use it for my for my autograph. So when I'm painting on say a PDF, or if I wanted to make an autograph brush, I would use the pen tool, or you could use the brush tool at hard, very small as well. So let's do a brush tool. We'll change the size way down to four as well. 
the same color and it does exactly the same thing. So you can get away with doing that for signing papers on PDF, bring the PDF into Photoshop, autograph it, or make a, a brush or a, um, a GIF with a clear background to drop into Word if you wanna sign something that way. So the pen tool and then the color replacement tool. If you wanna switch between tools, you hit B for brush or you can hit Shift B will go between the different tools. So I will go from brush to pencil tool to the color replacement tool, holding the shift key down, hitting the letter B. And every time you tap it, it rotates through there. So if you have three different tools in there, as you can see here, you hit it three times and it will cycle all the way through. If you have four tools, such as the healing brush tool has five, you hold shift J and it rotates through all the different healing tools there. Michael, if you've like, what I've done is I've separated my brushes out. Will it still jump down or do they have to be all grouped together when you hit the shift? Like if you take your, um, well, they have to be together to hit the shift. Okay. Because I, I, took, I removed that third one. I, I, I got rid of it since I never used it. Mm -hmm. I just separated some of the others into separate uh, icons there. So I was wondering if it would jump from icon to icon of the same letter. Well, let me find out. Um, I changed my mixer brush from B, which is in the mixer. It was in the mixer brushes under B and I changed it to A as my um, mm -hmm. shortcut because I didn't have an A going. And when I was working with Sandra Pierce's class, I wanted to get to that brush quickly. So I just changed it to A. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and edit the toolbar. And let me find JBA. Okay, let's make Mixer brush a B, but I'm going to leave it outside. So let's go to, okay, I have my brush, shift B, 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 and it dropped down. It, it, it did drop down. Right. Thank you. Okay. Let's go ahead and fix that and get it back to where I like it. And I've done this with my uh, mixer brush and my smudge tool are both an A because I use them separately for painting, um, doing Sandra Pierce's style of painting. Um, so, and does everybody know how to change your toolbar? So if you don't want certain tools in there, like the pin tool, which I totally hate, um, you can take it out. Down at the bottom, there's three dots. So let's go ahead and go to, the, you have three dots down here on the bottom of the bar. You click on those three dots. Sometimes you have to click twice and you click on edit toolbar. And if you don't want a certain tool there, let's say the slice subject tool, who uses a slice tool anymore? Does anybody know what it's for? You get a chocolate candy bar if you know what the slice tool is for. <laughs> Some guy at Adobe knows what it's for, or at least did when he wrote it. I do. It's for web. I do. I used to use it. Oh, web uh, design. Who, who just said that? I did. Thank you. I also did. Web design. Back in the days of old when nights were bold and you had dial up web, which was AOL, always offline, it would take your picture and slice it and make it go across for getting it in a little faster. So a little bit at a time. So the slice tool was used to do that. Anyway, back to this, we're going to take the slice tool and I'm going to drag it back over to the left-hand side under my lasso and polygonal lasso tool. And it's now under C, which is usually for the crop tool. And if we go to the crop tool, let me find my crop tool. 
And why is it not showing the slice tool there? There it is, way up there. So I don't like the slice tool because it's no benefit to me anymore because we all have high speed internet. Edit toolbar, take my slice tool, drop it to the left and it's gone. You can always put it back in again. Any of these tools that you don't use like my pen tool that's in the right hand side because I never use the pen tool will stay over there. Um, I don't use the background eraser tool paint bucket tool paint bucket tool used to be the only way you could fill an area with color now you just hit option delete or control delete or command delete and it will fill the color for you so let's go ahead and save that back to where it was and go be for brush and we're back to brush brush tool. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about another brush, which is the um, mixer brush, which is really cool for doing some oil painting and things like that. Um, I am not a total expert in it, but I'll show you a little bit about it. Sandra Pierce is the one to talk to about the class. I can't talk enough about her. Her class is wonderful. Um, she's doing a two-day program for PPC in June, I believe. Mel, can you help me there? Sometime in June? June 10 and 11. June 10 and 11. There's still room to sign up if you want to sign up for a class. With the mixer brush, you can mix colors together. In fact, let me use my Wacom tablet instead of my mouse. You can mix colors together. You can drag the blue into there and then just kind of mix them up a little bit like you're painting in oil which is really cool drag some red over here drag some blue over here and you can drag it all the way across by just kind of swiping 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 and then we'll mix the two together here add a little bit of green on the edge the mixer tool is one you got to practice with. I'm using what's called a, a greasy blender uh, brush. Michelle Parsley um, has this on her program. I got it from her. Sandra Pierce has some really cool brushes as well in this tool. Um, you have the greasy blender. You got one which is for making edges or doing a background. Um, they call it the scumbler. The mixer brush one, which is a Sandra Pierce brush. Same thing for mixing. You can drag the white in, you can drag the red out and you start blending colors. Um, you have a hairbrush which you can start making hair. So that, that one works really cool. Um, another brush, hairbrush and mixer brush, soft round. Um, and you'll notice these are up in my preferences up here. I've loaded them into my preferences. So when I use a brush and I like a brush, let's go back for regular brush, B for brush. I have some presets already done for me. Um, and we'll talk about presets in just a little bit how to get to them. So that is the mixer brush. Also included in the mixer brush is the smudge tool. And the smudge tool is great for making teeny tiny hairs. So right now, this is set to one pixel. You could bump it up. We'll do five pixels. So you can make bigger hair and then make it smaller again, add some little hairs in there, add some green hairs. So what you can do with the, the um, smudge tool is you kind of smudge the, the paint 
and it's really great for uh, making small tiny things you can also make it really big and do the same thing drag it out so that's the smudge tool and the mixer tool which are they're technically brushes i guess but you don't use them a lot for normal work. It's more for like oil paint kind of things. Let me close that. Any questions on that one? Don't save. Let's go to, okay. I'm gonna do something a little different on this. I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer and I am going to, believe it or not, brighten this up a little bit. And that is totally offensive bright. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill my uh, layer mask on the curved layer with black. So you can see my black is my background color on the left-hand side on my toolbar. The shortcut to fill with black is Command or Control, Backspace or Delete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint with the brush now. I'm going to paint with white to fill in. So B for brush, make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll paint with a flow of 25%. So I'm going to hit shift 25. And you can see it filled my flow at 25%. So if I paint on the highlights, you can add some highlight in there. And that's at 25% that I'm doing this. And just hitting the highlight areas to bring out a little bit more of the rocks. And you don't have to be extremely careful about what you're doing. You do want to hit the highlight areas only though. Um, you can hit some of the shadows and it's not going to really affect the shadows that much. So if I hit the shadows like right here on this rock, paint, 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 it looks kind of funky. So I'm going to hit X to go back to black to fill it back in again. And then X to go to the light colors to highlight. And you're going, oh, that didn't make much of a difference. Before and after. That's at 25%. Um, you could probably start at 10% and just build up on it. Then if you want, you can do the same thing again for the shadows. So you hit curves adjustment layer. And we're going to drop the shadows down a little bit. Click OK. We're going to fill this with black. Again, I hit command backspace or command delete to fill it in and just go into some of the darker areas. My flow is still at 25% and I'm just hitting the darker areas to kind of bring down the shadows. You don't want to go too dark so that you go completely black. Judges do not like completely black. They want some detail in the shadows. And you can barely see what I did there, just dropping the shadows down. But that's another way to dodge and burn so that you don't use the dodge and burn tool in Photoshop. You can use curves adjustments and then paint them back in. So questions on that? Very simply done there. If I go to my highlights, that's probably way too big. So we'll go to 10%. Even at 10% painting them in, you got to be careful how you do that. You can change the flow to opacity at 10% and do the same thing. But you can kind of bring in the colors a little bit more so they pop out. and make things splash a little bit. OK. 
Okay. Don't save any questions while I'm talking. Going once, going twice, gone. And you're probably wondering what I'm going to do with this. I don't have a clue. I'm going to take my lasso tool and go around this puppy right here and command J, which will bring it up on its own layer. And I'm going to make a cloud brush out of just this area right here. So first thing I do is change it to black and white. There's 20 different ways. Um, adjustments down to desaturate. And with that, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. The white part will not show up on a brush. The black part, the darker colors will. So I need to go to select, I'm sorry, adjustments, sure. invert, or command I. I should have done command I, it's so much easier. And then I'm going to do levels to bring up the white area behind the cloud. So drag the slider over almost to white. And that's OK. In fact, let's put a white background underneath it. So I'm going to fill with white, option backspace or option delete, because that's my foreground color. And you can see it's not completely white there. So another thing we can do is flatten it out. So just drop down here, flatten image. And then we'll go to image adjustments to threshold. That's not going to do it. Image. Adjustments, try posterize, see if that does it. Nope, that's not going to do it either. There used to be a trick we could do. Image adjustments, threshold, drag. Yeah, that's just going to make a blob, so that's not going to work. OK, let's go back to levels again then. I want to drag the slider over a little bit further. There we go. Getting rid of most of the edges. Now I have what looks like a, a backwards cloud. I'm going to flatten the image command or control E. Take my marquee tool. Drag around it. I'm going to go to edit. Define brush preset. And I'll call this cloud. In fact, let's call it a party cloud because it's Photoshop party. Party cloud. And I'm going to deselect that and fill with white. Change my colors to black as my primary color. And my flow's at 10%, so I want to change that back to 100 so I can see what I'm doing. And now you have a cloud brush. If you, like you see, right here have too much extraneous stuff around that's okay we can fix that let's go for b for brush again paint it in i'm going to get a round soft edge brush make it a lot smaller and i'm going to paint with white so x 
bring up my white and just get rid of that. Now I can do the same thing I did before, make a marquee around here, go to edit, define brush preset, party brush two, or party cloud two, I'm sorry. And now if you look in your brush tool, the last two brushes I did, party cloud and party cloud two are there. I have a preset group called cloud brushes. All I have to do is drag this up to the cloud brushes and drop it in there. It's now my cloud brushes. So everything is organized and I know where to find it sometimes. And a lot of times I have no idea how to find it. This party cloud, I didn't like because it had the extra stuff. I can either right click, delete brush, or you can go up to the settings wheel up here and delete brush. Goodbye brush. Be careful doing that because you can't get it back. That is how fast you can make a brush in Photoshop. Any questions? Is anybody awake out there? Okay, somebody is. They laughed at that joke. I hope that was a joke. Um, organizing your brushes. Click on your brush tools here. This will get the brush settings, which is okay. Then we have brush organizers on the right hand side or you can click on this brush right here and you can see the little number 16 up there that I think was because I did this in 16 bit so it's a 16 bit brush I don't know why it does that now I didn't know it did that before um, but you can organize your brushes if you want to drag my brushes down to the bottom you can do that or drag it back up to the top Whoops, it just put it in general brushes. I don't want that. I want that above. Drag it out. Goodbye. And then drag it back up. Make sure you get the blue line that goes across. It shows you're outside of the general brushes. You can make a new group. You can rename your group. So let's say I had uh, a bunch of lightning brushes. Call a new brush group. Call it lightning. and it just put lightning in there. So if I make a new brush for lightning or if I have lightning brushes, I just drag it into the lightning brush group and it's there. If I don't want that group anymore, I can delete the group. Do I want to delete? Yes, goodbye. You can also add or import brushes because I notice I just got a brand new laptop and a lot of brushes were not there. I have some Mike's favorites. I have general brushes. Legacy brushes was not in there. I wanted to show somebody the grass brush the other day and it wasn't there. I didn't want to spend the time to upload it and do all that, so I just moved on. But grass brush, this is really cool. This is fun. Little brush there. I'm going to change the colors to a green. Let's go with a, a medium green for a foreground color. And let's go to a darker green for a background color. And this one has some jitter in it. So what you do is you can paint some brushes or paint some grasses in there. And you can change the opacity jitter you can change um, the flow jitter, how fast it comes out, shape dynamics, size jitter is up to 100%. If I change it to 10%, it only changes a little bit. If I change it to 100%, you're going to get bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller. You can see the difference in the sizes. So when I'm playing with grasses, I do um, the sizes. You can change the minimum diameter. So it's going to be really skinny or 
they're all going to be fat. Um, you can change the angle jitter. So right now it's at 10% for the angle jitter. And jitter just means how you want to change it up. So angle is 10% there. Let's bump it up to 100%. And you can see it goes every which way but loose. Let me go back to 10 because I like that's where it's at. Roundness jitter, you can change how round it is um, or how not round it is. It just depends on what you want. Minimum roundness, you can change. You can change color dynamics. You can change scattering, so how wide it's going to be. So right now, scatters at 33%. If you look at the bottom box of the, the gray tool right here, right now it's at 33%. Let's change it to 1,000%. It goes all over the place. If you're painting snowflakes, you want to change that way outside the box. Count, you can do a whole lot or you can do just a few. Um, count jitter, same thing. You can change, jitter just means it's going to go all over the place, which is cool. Color dynamics, foreground and background jitter. It's I have it dark and light greens. So it's going to go 100% between the difference. If I set it down to say 10%, you see it stays pretty much the dark, which is the foreground, <clears throat> and just a little bit of background. <coughs> Excuse me. Hue jitter, um, change the hues of the greens that we have. And it goes into blues and reds and all kinds of stuff. So you can change that. That works really well with um, like a maple leaf or something like that when you're doing fall colors. You can do that as well. You can change the saturation from not so saturated to very saturated. Doesn't look like it changed very much there. And brightness. So right now it was set to zero. that's a hundred percent so it comes out a lot brighter like you fertilized your grass and purity i'm not so sure what that does transfer you can control it with your pin pressure you can fade it stylus wheel uh, right now it's turned off but let's say i said pin pressure so i'll take my pin from my wacom tablet and barely touching pushing really hard. So see the pin pressure does a whole lot of difference there if you change the control. Um, you can change the opacity jitter as well. So it goes light and dark, dark and light. Um, flow jitter, same thing. And then smoothing. For some reason my smoothing is not turning on and it's unlocked. So I don't know the answer to that one. Smoothing, normally you can, especially with the round edge brush, you can make a straight line or you can make a dotted line with it. Let's go to hard round pressure sized and then see if smoothing will, will not. Okay, I can't get it to do anything with smoothing today. It might've been with one of my updates. Um, let's say you have an image, let's go back to my clouds. We have my clouds here. I like a certain shade of blue on here. Let's say the blue right here between the clouds. Let's say I like that color and I want to use it. All I have to do, I can either go to eye for eyedropper and click there and it changes my foreground color. Or if I'm in the brush tool, I can hold the option or alt key, click on there, 
and it puts my foreground color in there. So let me set it to default colors. So we have black as our default right now. I'm going to option click this blue area. And now I have a light blue. Or if I want the white from the cloud, option click there, white cloud, gray cloud. So you can get your colors that way. If you want to do a straight line while you are painting, it's really, really easy to do. So let me make a small, change my brushes to I have white so it shows up. Click on there, hold the shift key, click over here, and it painted on white. If I do my mouse instead of my Wacom tablet, click, shift, click. And you can hold your shift key down the whole time and it will go a straight line wherever your cursor is lined up at. So you can draw straight lines that way. Um, another thing to think about, can everybody see my cursor right now up in the sky? Yep. Okay. There is a yes. Yep. Thank you. I worry sometimes maybe it got turned off. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to hold my cap lock down and it changes it to a plus sign. If you get this plus sign and you didn't do it intentionally and you're going, why is my, I don't have a brush. No matter what I touch, it still paints, but it's a cap sign or a, plus sign your cap locks are on so it's on your keyboard hit cap lock it's lit up turn it off some people would like to have it that way i don't um and then also in the preferences we'll go photoshop preferences go down to cursors you can change the different mode from standard precise is the cap lock way normal brush tip full size brush tip show the crosshairs in your brush tip which is pretty cool or only show the crosshair while painting so let's do that for now and you can see when i start to paint it only goes to crosshairs before I paint, I have the circle. As soon as I hit the paint portion, it goes straight into crosshairs. And that can confuse you a little bit. So you just go into your um, preferences into cursors and click that off. And then you can show the brush lease leash while smoothing. So that one's kind of cool. Smoothing is turned off. Let's turn it on to 100%. And I'm going to paint. And you can see it puts a leash on the front of it where I'm going. To me, that's kind of sort of annoying and drives me crazy. So I turn it off. But you can leave your leash on. You can also change your leash color as well. Um, if you start screwing around in here and clicking going, uh oh, I forget what, what it was before and I didn't want all those clicked, hold the option or alt key and look at the cancel button over here. It changes to reset. Just click on that and it resets to what it was. Turn off that, click OK, and everything's back to normal. And one more thing before we go out today, let's close this. Um, I showed this a couple of months ago, but I'm going to show it again. On the paintbrush tool on the toolbar on the top, you have what looks like a butterfly. Click on the butterfly, and it does some really cool stuff. So if I click on the one that's, I don't know what the full word is for it, mandala symmetry. 
Right now it's set to three, which is default. I'm going to bring it up to nine and click OK. And it brings up this weird design. You go, hmm, what does that do? Hit enter, make a smaller brush. And I'm going to change my brush color to default, be easiest to do. Hard edge brush just for fun. And you can make designs with that particular brush. So using the butterfly up there. So something weird to play with and experiment with. Wow. I mean, that's, that's something that's totally experimental. Radial, we'll do a five count radial. And let's change it to a nice pretty blue. Can't change it, okay. Change it to blue color. By the way, blue is my favorite color. So if I'm judging, make sure you have blue images. And they'll score so much better. That's the radial. And we'll do wavy just for fun. I got no idea what this does. Okay, that's what that does. So you just play with these and decide what you want to do and have a good time with them. So any questions? No questions. Everybody's awake, right? How did you get the banana? <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my top secrets. <laughs> okay. I have never seen it before. Let's go ahead and <laughs> go back to edit toolbar. When you finish editing your toolbar, if you click on done, the banana goes away. You can see I, now I just have three dots, which is what everybody has right now is three dots. So I click on my three dots, go to edit toolbar. When I go to save it, I'm going to hit Shift Option Done. Please don't make a liar out of me. There we go. And you get a banana. Shift, shift Option okay. Done or Shift Alt Done. Shift Alt. Okay. For PC, it's Shift Alt. For uh, a Mac, it's Shift Option Done. And that will get a banana there. And that will get some conversation going with people. How did you get a banana there? <laughs> and I don't know of any other any other Easter eggs there that would cause any other thing besides a banana. And I don't remember who showed it. Might have been Matt Kluskowski, um who showed that. But I saw that one time. So, oh, I got to add that. That's something cool. Any other questions? <laughs> Hey, Michael, I saw something, I think it was in a Lightroom demonstration about starting off a line with a small brush at the beginning of the line and a large diameter brush at the end of the line to, you know, to create the, create the so-called God rays. Okay. Does um, that make sense? It makes sense, but I don't know of any way to do that except pin pressure or maybe putting a guide in there to go through um, as well. I have okay. not, I have not seen that and okay. I don't use Lightroom, so I don't know. Okay. Dennis, All Dennis, right. do you know of any way to do that? Don't. Okay. I mean, I have seen it done, but boy, I see it's like Christmas every day. I can find my own present, so I'll have to <laughs> search that one out. <laughs> That's like me reading a book. I haven't read it for the third time or fourth time. It's still a brand new book for me. Yeah. Now, I know I I've seen it done, but I wish I could remember. I'll have to go back and research on my notes out. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I don't remember either. Um, and I don't do Lightroom, so I'm just the opposite. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. You bet. Any other questions?
Okay, next week what I'll show in brushes again is how to get your presets and some of the presets that I have and we'll make a couple for you. So that you like eye retouching that I do. Um, I have a eye whitener, which is just a brush. <coughs> and when you're doing eye whites, remember not to do white, white, white eyes because they look like zombies. In fact, I saw one in print competition this weekend that was really bright white. And I go, oh, and the judges didn't catch it. I didn't think so. Interesting. But it also didn't score very well. Well, yeah, that too. Yeah, the eyes are out of position and something else. Okay, cool. I'm going to stop recording.